thank you guys so much for being here this morning and, and spending your Friday with us. I'm really excited that we're able to offer um, this training series today to focus on um, building creative campaign elements for uh, the big payback this year. Uh, Stephanie Semkin is super talented. She works with, uh, with organizations all across Nashville uh, and Middle Tennessee with her uh, agency Stone and Steel Creative, and she's a great friend to the Community Foundation and to the Big Payback. Uh, so thank you to Stephanie for for giving us your time today. Um, I'm sure she'll she'll be sharing more about um, her work and her experience. I don't want to to uh, take too much of her time, um, but I, I've met a lot of you. I'm Catherine Bennett. I am with the Community Foundation. I serve as the Giving Matters Manager givingmatters.com manager, uh, and I oversee many aspects of the big payback, including uh, registration and trainings. Uh, so if you have questions, anything you want to follow up on after today's training, I'll just drop our uh, big payback email address in the chat. It's just the big payback at cfmt.org. Uh, but we would love to chat with you if you have questions uh, after the fact. Um, but I will turn things over to Stephanie. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, Catherine. I am very excited to be here. Like Catherine said, I do a lot of work with nonprofits. So my, my background is graphic design. Um, I started doing that all, more than a decade ago. Um, and over time, I've been um, <clears throat> running a, a branding agency. Catherine mentioned Stone and Still Creative. And so we do branding and marketing and communications for nonprofit organizations. Um, so we do some consulting through um, Center for Nonprofit Management, um, do a lot of um, design work in terms of like annual reports, um, event materials, things like that, um, and partner up with other creative people to build campaigns and other assets that are needed for organization communication. So um, I'm excited to be here and share some of the knowledge that I've accumulated over that time. I'm hoping that there's some nuggets of wisdom you'll be able to to use in your organization because there's there's a few exercises and things I think that if you go through um, it makes approaching some of this creative stuff a little more comfortable um, so a little less scary as I know sometimes we we think about creative or oh I'm not a creative person I'm not an artist everybody's creative everybody is has the ability to be creative it's just uh, finding how you're creative like finding those ways to dig in and and find those ideas and concepts that you want to work with so um, I'm gonna share some slides I have so today's workshop will be a workshop so every time I teach um, it's um, it's very interactive in terms of I'm gonna talk some and share some but a lot of the times I'm gonna have you working. I'm gonna have you kind of digging in and practicing some of this. So I'll be sharing some slides, some examples, and then we'll shift things around and, and allow you to, to kind of practice some of these skills. Does that sound good? Cool. So I will, um, I'm gonna share my screen here um, so we can dig into some of this information. As I'm as I'm sharing information, if you've got questions along the way, you're welcome to um, find a, a pause in my talking and, and shout out your question if you have it. Um, you're also welcome to use the chat if you want to drop anything in there. And I, I, I've got it up. I'm keeping an eye on it as I'm, as I'm talking. So if there's anything you want clarification on or have some thoughts or suggestions or questions, just pop them in there for me. Um, Definitely want to hear from you. Definitely don't want to hear myself talk for two hours. So let's let's jump in there if you have anything. Um, everybody can see these slides. It's the big payback, big logo campaign planning. All right. Well, here we go. So um, th today's workshop's in two parts. Um, as you know, we've signed up for one or the other or both. So this morning, we're going to talk all about messaging. We're going to be talking about the verbal components of building a campaign. I'm going to talk about what that looks like and then have you practice doing some of these things. Um, this afternoon is going to be all about the visual components of a campaign. So we'll be um, I'll be showing you some basic design principles and best practices. And then the majority of that workshop is going to be you digging into Canva and, and building, building some graphics for your campaign or building some practice graphics, whatever you have access to today. Um, so that's kind of what we'll be doing. Uh, so this morning, 
Um, what I'm hoping that is when you leave today, you'll feel a little more confident and well-equipped to build your campaign in terms of verbal messaging, in terms of what to say. So you'll be more comfortable about that. You're not going to build the whole campaign in two hours. I think that would be a really unreasonable expectation for me to, for me to expect that from you and you to expect that from yourself. So this is going to give you the tools to be able to, to do that, to generate that content. Um, we'll break it down like this. Um, so these are the rough stages of putting together a campaign. So first we'll be figuring out what our goal is for the campaign. We, we don't often um, kick off any kind of marketing or communication without knowing what we want the result to be. So we're going to figure that out first. Then we're going to decide what it is overall we want to say. And then we're going to practice writing some specific content. So first of all, I want to back up and just like make sure we're all using the same vocabulary. So when I say campaign, I realized this last year when I was doing some training with Big Payback, um, the Big Payback is called a campaign. So building your campaign at bigpayback.org is like the technical aspects of putting it together. What we're talking about today is all the marketing and communication that's promoting you as an organization. And the key word here is planned. Um, we want to map it out have a plan. Um, planned results are usually stronger than not planned results. So we're, we're working well ahead of time so that you have time to plan things out. Um, so what do we want to think about when we're building a campaign? We're going to touch on all of this. Uh, so putting structure around a few things. So who are we talking to? Where are they? Where do we find them? Um, what are they interested in about your organization? Uh, what do you want them to do or know? So for this, it's, it's give on May 6th, 5th, 5th, 6th. Anyway, give on big payback day. Um, how do we say it? Like what, what are we going to specifically do and then when? So we've got a little bit of like planning content calendar stuff at the end. So let's talk about defining our, our goal first. For the campaign. Um, a campaign can have any, any type of goal specific to your organization, what is it that you want to achieve. For the big payback, um, after kind of doing this for a few years and looking at what's been successful, there's really a few sort of general buckets that your goal might fall in. So the first one I think is the easiest to communicate. It gives you something sort of concrete and literal to, to grab onto, and that's raising funds for a specific initiative. So say there's something like a new program you're launching, you've got a capital campaign going, um, there's something in particular that you wanna raise funds for and it has a set amount, dollar amount that you want to raise. Um, I talked to a lot of organizations last year that were using the big payback as an opportunity to build brand awareness. So they were either a new organization, they were in transition, they wanted to reach a different audience, and it was less about raising funds and more about raising awareness. So they wanted to figure out what to say about themselves that would be the most impactful. Um, and then a third opportunity is just raising funds for your general operations, reminding folks what you do overall and uh, why they should support that. So, is there anything you would add to this list? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Oops, there we go. Oh, you're fine, Jordan. Yeah, if y'all need to bounce out and come back in anytime, you totally can. Um, so, so I'm going to have you for a moment kind of think about this. Like, what is your goal for the for this year's big payback? Um, throughout today's workshops, we're going to be referring to um, this fictitious nonprofit that I've created called Suns Out, Tongues Out. It's uh, a nonprofit organization that puts on a summer camp for dogs. Um, they've been around for almost a decade and um they are ready and excited to participate in the big payback today. So this is not a real organization. This is totally made up. It's something I kind of had fun with a couple of years ago. Um, 
So we're going to be referring to this from time to time. So if I'm thinking about this summer camp for dogs, we've been around for a while. What do we need? What's, what's a goal that we could put our campaign around? And so for this organization, we've taken a look around and we've decided we've been around for a decade and some of the equipment at our summer camp is in disrepair. So we need to upgrade our equipment. That's our specific goal for this campaign and we need $5,000 to do it. Um, so we write that down and say that's that's what we want to do. So I want you to, to spend just a minute here um, thinking about your campaign goal. Uh, if you've got a pen and paper nearby, if you want to open a Google Doc um, or just kind of write notes in your phone, something, I would get something to kind of take notes on um, throughout this morning. But what is something that could be your goal for your organization? Maybe you've already thought about that and you've come to this session with that information, or maybe you're, you want to spend some time now kind of digging in. Like, is there a specific initiative? Do we want to build brand awareness or do we want to raise funds for our operations or is it something else? So I'm going to stop talking here for about three or four minutes and let you kind of jot some ideas down and then we'll, then we'll, discuss. As you add, as you have some things kind of written down, um, drop them in the chat. Um, I'd love to see what y'all are thinking. Just kind of where we're all at. And thank you, Catherine, for the the notes there. The big payback starts on May fifth this year at six p.m. Jennifer and Lauren have dropped in a couple things in there. So two specific initiatives. So funding a particular scholarship. What is a water table, Jennifer? Uh, so Discovery Center is a hands-on children's museum in Murfreesboro. Uh, yeah. So we have uh, a really large water play area. Um, and so we're hoping to raise some funds to, to revamp that area to bring it into the 2000s. <laughs> Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, I grew up in Rutherford County. I spent a lot of uh, time at the Discovery Center as a child. <laughs> Didn't remember specifically a water table. Yeah, yay. So fun. Tucker's House is asking for a donation for modification to a home. Our project cost is 14 Love it. You've got a dollar amount attached to there. That's something you can can hang on to in some of your messaging. Now a lot of brand awareness. 
going on. That's good. So we'll dig into that for sure in the next step in, in defining what your core message is going to be. We want to think about what we want to say there. Caitlin's going to do it all. General ops, raise more awareness. <laughs> Great, great, great. Okay, this is good. This is good. So you guys keep thinking on this. Um, I'm going to move us on to the next step um, in in terms of kind of figuring out what we want to say about this. Um, so yeah, keep dropping them in the chat if you'd like. Um, does anybody have any questions so far? All right, okay. Well, moving, moving right along then to um, figuring out what we're going to say. What is the core message? So core message for a campaign is simply, you know, what's the big takeaway? What is the, the common theme or thread that's going to run through all of the posts that we make, all of the things that we say about what we're, what we're doing? So what's the kind of common thread? What's what do we want to say? And I've got a few examples here of, of organizations from last year. So um, this, this first one is the National State Community College Foundation. Um, we've been working with them for a long time, helping them kind of hone their core messaging. Um, and so last year's big payback um, was an opportunity for them to talk about a new fund that they were setting up called Helping Hands. And interestingly, um, you know, the foundation has been around for a while. And so they provide scholarships and like textbook assistance and other things that students need um, to make sure that they're getting the education at National State. So they launched this Helping Hands Fund. And then, um, then we had the year that we had last year and students ended up having to work off campus from home. So they very quickly switched this to being all about technology um, and getting the students the technology they need. So they focused a lot on that. So they've got, they found pictures of students, they asked students to send them pictures of them working on the laptops that they were loaned. Um, and then this campaign was all about helping our students um, focus on their work and not be worried about the technology needs. So keeping the students on track uh, with their education goals. So that was an example of a specific initiative. Um, uh, Poverty in the Arts is a great job um, throughout the year, actually, with campaigns, um, not just the big payback. They uh, will often have social media campaigns around something in particular, and they'll, they'll have it running for a period of time. Um, it might still be ongoing. They, they had an initiative for a while where they were trying to send a piece of artwork um, to every state in the country. So encouraging people to buy artwork and ship it to a friend or someone in another state. So they had a map that they were dropping pins on um, to, to kind of reach that goal of sending our work to all 50 states. So for a big payback last year, they had a series of art demos uh, because their focus was really all about, you know, meet the artists, let's shine the light on them, show what we're all about, like who it is that we're supporting. Um, a couple other education focused um, central messages, summer reading, building our curriculum. Um, uh, ABR, MT Blade Runners, um, went through sort of a rebrand last year, and they used the big payback as an opportunity just to remind folks of what they do and what their impact is. So this is a good example of that. They, they had a couple of sentences of content that they, um, they worked into everything over a couple months period of time just to keep pushing home that, that message of, of who they are, what they do, and who they're, who they're impacting. Um, Friends of Shelby Park is an example of kind of like general awareness and general ops. Um, they use the big payback as an opportunity to shout out all of their um, big achievements from the past year um, or over time. So planting new trees, um, those really fun picking parties at Cornelia Fork Park. Um, they host, so reminding us of all the good things that they're doing um, and then saying that you can help us keep doing these great things with your donation. So this is an example of kind of general operations. 
So again, I want you to kind of get out a piece of paper, um, some notes or something and start to think about, you know, what, um, here's some questions, you know, what makes your work yours? So what's really special about your organization? What are you doing that nobody else is doing? If you're, if you're thinking about like raising awareness and general ops, think about these things, you know, what's something you can own? Like we are the only organization that fill in the blank. Um, I like to ask this question. So what would happen if your organization didn't exist? So what, what need is being filled specifically by, by your organization and the work that you're doing? Think about that. Um, think about the impact that you're making. Um, one thing I want you to think about is, is why instead of what. So rather than focusing on, and this is good since we've got so many folks who are thinking about uh, wanting to raise awareness in general ops, um, thinking about why is a bit more compelling to a uh, potential donor than, than like the specific services. Tell them why it's important. Tell them why this matters. Um, I like to give this example of Tennessee Craft um, because for a long time they they have been sort of challenged with this perception that they host the fairs in Centennial Park, period. Um, but that's that's a, that's one piece of what they do. That's their what. That's one of the what's that they do. They do a lot of different things. They host workshops, networking, community events. Uh, but they're kind of known for the craft fair. So we work with them to flip the messaging. Um, so instead of thinking about the craft fairs first, we think about why they exist and it's creating opportunities for craft artists to thrive. And this became really important last year when the fairs got canceled. Um, they turned their attention to social media and started running a campaign where they featured their artist, um, where they featured their artist. Yeah, I thought that I hesitated because I thought I'd put it in there and I did. Good job, me. Um, so they ran a campaign for the big payback and beyond um, where they were featuring the artists, telling their stories. And so they asked the donor the question, will you continue supporting us so we can continue supporting artists like Alexis? Called them out by name, showed off their work, kind of talked about how art is important to the community, et cetera. Um, they continued this campaign. They're actually building a system now for um, shopping online, having their artist members kind of promote their work there. So by flipping the message to why they're able to keep communicating, even though the craft fair is canceled, right? So instead of focusing on what, they could focus on why. Okay, so um, hopefully that gives you a lot to think about. I uh, hope you've got some things spinning around in your head right now. I want to work to get some of that out of your heads now. So um, I am going to stop sharing my screen. I can take a look of what's going on here. Um, we're gonna hop into breakout rooms and I'm gonna have you uh, work with a partner to kind of develop a core message. And I should not have stopped sharing my screen yet because I wanted to show you my little fun doggy park example. Um, so through thinking about, okay, we wanna upgrade our equipment, we need to raise this money. Some of the key takeaways that we want from this is we want people to understand that our current equipment is in disrepair and this is a need. This is not a want, it's a need. Um, and we wanna remind people that active dogs are happy dogs. So focusing on happy dogs, we know that they're happier when they are running around and playing and have this opportunity to stretch their legs. So that's kind of the core messages that um, where we would be doing for, for this particular organization. So um, I'm gonna stop sharing again. Sorry for the whiplash on the uh, back and forth sharing. Um, we're gonna jump into breakout rooms here. All right, how did that go? Those of you that are already back with us. Yeah, yeah Lee, I think you were, you were circling around some good ideas when I popped into your room. Yeah, it was nice because I didn't really come into this workshop with a, a planned out idea. So it was nice to just have someone to kind of bounce, bounce ideas off of. 
you nailed it. Yes. Bouncing ideas off of other people. That is one, like if there's one thing I would recommend for people to like practice creative thinking, it's just talk to other people, <laughs> get the stuff out of your head. Right. Cause I think it's there. I think a lot of the stuff that we want to say is there. Um, it just gets kind of tangled with all the other things we have to do and think about and yada, yada. But if you can like take five minutes to just be like, Hey, can I talk this out with you? Um, or write it out with you. Yeah. Love it. Bouncing ideas off of each other. Well, and Stephanie, I was going to say like for me at Tucker's house, I'm not the creative force. I'm not the, the end all on the creative side of things. Like, so this is more of like a think tank for me today. Yeah, um, that I can take back because our executive director really prides himself on his creativity and his graphics and marketing. So he really will probably be driving more of the, the route he wants to go. And he usually like as he says he likes to zig when people zag. So he really kind of steers off of the norm sometimes. So oh, okay. <laughs> it'll be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Love gotta love those executive directors, right? <laughs> it's always a good time. Um well yeah, I let yes, I'm glad you brought that up because uh remember I started this by saying you're not gonna finish this campaign today. Like there's no way. And one of the reasons is you know we just we're we've we're bound by time. We have a couple hours and you can sometimes bust a campaign out in two hours but not usually. The other reason is you're not, some of us are working uh, as the solo at the organization, but most of us aren't. And you've got to go talk to some other people to build things out. That's a great example of that. So yeah, I hope you can like take some tools back to your team and kind of work through this um, a little bit more. Um, all right. I think most people made it back. I think we lost some folks, but they'll, but they, they'll, they've got something else to do. They'll come back. Um, anybody uh, have an aha moment in your conversations? Um, anybody um, discover that as they were talking about the organization, they, they did have a key message. They just didn't know it until they said it out loud. Yeah. I'd love to hear a couple of examples. What did y'all come up with? Let's see. Um, Catherine's group, Catherine, Lauren, and Rachel. How did your conversation go? Do you come up with anything in your in your team? I'd also love if y'all would drop in the chat too if you um, have anything written down. Uh, I just think within our group that something that we talked about was kind of where, where all of our organizations are kind of in a similar boat where maybe we haven't maybe emphasize as much of the big payback as we maybe could have. And this year we're really trying to push for it. And so it was kind of interesting to talk to everyone or talk to the other two girls about that because we kind of felt like we were in the same boat. And like this year we're really trying to, to make that push and make that drive just to get our name kind of out there. Get your name out there. Yeah. So how are you going to do that? Anyway, I noticed that in the chat, I heard that a lot when I was bouncing around the rooms, like this is the year we're going to get our name out there. So what are you going to say? Like, what's what's the big takeaway? What should someone know about your organization? And, I, and I'm talking to Rachel or I'm talking to anybody else that might have have a direction on that. And it may not be solid. Maybe, again, it's something you, you're kind of thinking about and wanting to find. But what should we know? Like, what's the big takeaway? One, one thing for us at Tucker's House is quality of life. Mm -hmm. For our families, whether it's the um, children or young adults or their caregivers, Mm -hmm. What we do really does change um, their day-to-day -day routines, um, yeah. and whether it's physical or, or mental for these families. So yeah. the quality of life is, is really important for our families. Love it. Quality of life. So, um, so I'm looking back in the chat. And so you said that your main goal for campaign this year is to um, raise funds for modifications to a home. And so the big takeaway, your big campaign message is going to be all about improving quality of life. Um, 
And then we can start writing out specific messages, which is what we're going to do next. But so the big takeaway, the thing that ties the campaign together is uh, quality of life. And you're doing it through modifications on the home. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. I can see yours kind of coming together. We've got a little thread going there. Uh, maybe one more. Like, let's hear from one more organization. Let's see. I'll go. Yeah, Lauren. Um, at Renewal House, one of our big focuses um, that we want to raise more awareness about specifically is just how we have our women bring their children to the program too. We're one of the few treatment centers that actually allow that. So lately we've talked a lot about focusing on the children more and what we provide for the children within the treatment center. And so we're gonna use, hopefully use the big payback to promote that idea and get people more aware of that component of our services. Yeah, yeah, I worked with Renewal House many, many years ago. Um, I think the whole team has turned over since then. <laughs> so we don't know each other. But um, but I remember learning that exactly what you just said, Renewal House is really unique and that it keeps the family together through the treatment. Um, and so you, you can just really lean into that and say, you know, just keep reminding folks like, hey, we're the only organization doing this. We're the only organization doing this, right? Um, and so that's kind of your big takeaway is we're keeping the family together. Here's these cute kids we're helping, right? That's great. Yeah, love it. So that's a good example of like we're raising awareness and raising money for general operations, but we're honing in on like what specifically someone should know about this organization. All right. Well, good work, everybody. I hope that that gave you some some like like kickoff to um, to thinking about what a uh, what a goal and what a message might be for your um, for your campaign this year. So again, probably not going to land on it solidly today, but this hopefully gives you a platform to take back to keep working on this. All right. I am going to share my screen again and. Um, keep working through um, the, uh, the next part of, of what we're doing. Um, so now that we have kind of the big takeaway, like what's the big summary of everything we should know once we read all of these posts and, and content for the campaign, uh, now it's time to start parsing that out, start to write specific messaging and content. So we're going to practice this um, in, the in the last part of this workshop, um, give you a few examples, a few key tips um, and best practices in writing good content. So um, a few things I want you to take note of when we're thinking about what makes a really strong message. Um, the first thing, and especially in the social media space, and especially when we're working on a campaign that so many other organizations are participating in, brevity and focus are key. So we want to be very specific and we want to be very quick in what we're writing. And we've got some exercises planned to help you think about that. Um, I heard... I think it was the Entrepreneur Center. I jumped, jumped into a breakout room talking about faces and places associated with their organization. And it made me excited to jump into this bullet point, people not programs. So instead of saying, again, what we do, here's our, here is our program, here is what it is, let's focus on the people and tell their stories, right? That's, um, tell, you know, how they've benefited, what the outcomes were um, when they participated in your particular program. Um, benefits, not features. This is similar. We're going to dig into this a little bit later, so I won't spend time there. Um, avoiding vague language or jargon. We get into this a lot in the nonprofit space. We use words like impact and outcomes and uh, initiatives and um all kinds of different words that are meaningful to our space and meaningful to our organizations, but may not be meaningful to um, an outside donor. So we want to uh, work on getting some of that language a little more simplified, and we are going to have an exercise that we'll do to, to help with that. Everything should tie back to your mission uh, of all of these tips. I think this one is the one that we see the most success with in general. Uh, we talk about our mission quite a lot. Um, so we want to make sure that all of our messaging is always strengthening that. 
And then finally, we want to talk to the donor specifically and make sure that they can see themselves in your mission. So we're finding ways to connect them to your messaging. We'll talk about that a little bit as well. So this is kind of the things that we want to go through, um, kind of give yourself a checklist when you're writing and make sure you're kind of hitting all these points. Okay, so a couple of examples here. Um, Hands on National always does a great job of bringing the donor into the ask. Um, every time, well, not every time, I don't have a full <laughs> full uh, like working knowledge of their social media, but um, oh, Jordan, that's a great question. We're gonna get to that. Are you coming? Are you coming to the afternoon session? Yes, okay. We're gonna work on that in the afternoon for sure. Um, but remind me if I don't talk about it in the morning, let's, let's talk about that. Um, so anyway, Hands on Nashville does a great job of involving their reader and their donor in the ask. So reminding them of why I should give, not what we're doing, but like we're leveraging volunteer power to make Nashville a better place. Um, it doesn't talk about any specific programming, talks about what the outcome is, making Nashville a better place. Um, Imagination Library, right? So the what is delivering books. So um, it's not necessarily uh, donate $12 so we can deliver books. It's um, donate $12 so that we can sponsor one child for the year to spark a child's love of reading. So as a donor who cares a lot about education, I'm looking for messages like this, right? Like I want children to love reading. I want them to develop this, this, um, this love of reading, for lack of better words. So again, tying the reader into the ask, focusing on the why. Um, make the message specific to your organization. I love this post from um, the Williamson County Animal Center. Um, this is not a generic dog picture. This is one of their dogs that um, went through um, one of their programs I believe it was a dental uh, surgery that this dog had. So we're showing off uh, this dog's sweet smile um, and the caption goes into talking about the dental surgery. So making it super specific, say when you donate, you can help animals like Maggie um, with something very specific like this dental surgery. Um, so if you're making a message specific to your organization, I'll talk about that just a little bit in terms of the confidentiality piece. Um, I have examples in the afternoon of that because because uh, that really becomes important when we're talking about visuals because we can't show people if we're confidential. So we have to lean into other visual strategies for that. In terms of messaging, you can tell outcomes without sharing confidential information. Um, so thinking about what someone can achieve once once they go through your programs or initiative quality of life better opportunities for jobs think about the outcomes and things like that and you might be able to share details without sharing confidential information um okay moving on thinking about uh simplifying messaging so people don't typically read especially in a digital environment they're scanning you do this, I do this, your donors are doing this, they are scanning. Um, and they're doing it like this. Their images catch our eyes first, especially images of people and animals because our eyes are attracted to other eyes. So if we see eyes, we typically pause. So images first, um, images with words in them next because then you read a little bit. Anytime you can break up content in terms of like short phrases, bullet point lists, which isn't necessarily specific to social media, but for like email marketing, um, other things like that. Anytime you can break up the text into short phrases, the better. Then once someone has been engaged to scan through all of that, then they read the details. So I want you to keep that in mind as you're writing content for today, for the future, um, keeping messages short, brief, concise, lean into keywords, key images. So when you're looking for content that's quick, clear, and easy to access, very easy to digest, something accessible. Um, editing, 
Um, I like to talk about editing because um, this is the complete opposite of what we were told to do for, you know, however many years you were in school, right? You start writing papers um, probably in elementary or middle school, and you keep doing that through college and through grad school, perhaps. Um, and the goal in school is how many words can you write? Like, let's meet the word count. Let's meet the page count. So we start using like really flowery language. We start expanding um, our content to fit the page. And so this is a little bit of an unlearning here. So instead of trying to make as many words as possible, we want to make as few words as possible. Because again, we're, we're looking for short, concise, quick, easy to understand. Um, so looking at a couple of examples here, just how can you cut, how can you shorten phrases without cutting the meaning of, of the phrases? Um, here's an example. Um, if we want to be focused, we, we not only want to shorten, we also want to say the important thing first. So um, that the example on the left um, has a quote. We love quotes. We're always putting quotes. Quotes are usually supporting information. They're usually not the big, big event. Um, people definitely scan over quotes. Um, so if we're if we're trying to get the point across about the the drinking water quality in Flint, Michigan, let's just say it. Let's let's get to the point right away. Um, let's not bury it in information about a press release and da 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 with a quote. Let's just say it, right? Brief and focused. Okay, so I'm gonna have you practice this just uh, just a minute here. Um, so. Uh, um, not only thinking about writing in a short way, I also want you to think about avoiding jargon and using, instead of using $10 words, we're using, what, what's the app, what is the shorter? We're avoiding $10 words. We're making it easy. We're making it easy to digest. So quick and easy. So um, for this exercise, I want you to write a sentence about your organization looking for using words that are only six letters or shorter. So here's an example. This is actually a sentence I got from an organization one time. We enhance learning opportunities to empower our community through streamlined communications and collaboration. So what do they do? <laughs> I don't know. Um, and if I'm a donor who's outside of the nonprofit world, I may not know what it means to empower the community. I may not know what streamlined communications are. I may not know what you mean by enhanced learning opportunities. That could mean almost anything. Um, so let's just shorten it up and say we help people reach their education goals by hosting small group sessions so they can learn from each other. So we're helping people reach their educa education goals not enhancing learning opportunities. Does that make sense? And so of course, education is longer than six words, but that's one of those words that's pretty essential to understanding what's happening here. So I can use that word, uh, but instead of enhancing learning opportunities, I'm gonna say we help people reach their goals, All right? So here's your prompt. So tell me about a favorite feature or program or initiative of your organization or the work that you do. And I want you to write me a sentence um, aiming for words that are six letters or less in length. And so I'm gonna throw it back to the example so you can see. And I'm gonna give you, I'll just give you like about three or four minutes to do this. I want us, we've got a little bit more to cover, so I want us to, to spend a little time practicing this.
I'm laughing at Lauren's comment. This is harder than it seems. Yeah, write it, just write whatever comes to your head first. So like think about your organization or think about your program and just kind of write that out, then go back and edit it and make it, make it cleaner, make it shorter. That's the editing process too. Almost never do I publish the first thing I write. I use the first attempt, you should see some of these Google Docs that I have. The first attempt is just gibberish almost. It's just getting everything out of my head onto paper. Then I go back and organize it. Then I go back and shorten it up. I'm going to give you maybe one more minute on this. So, so start kind of making your final edits, tightening up that sentence. All right, let's uh, let's start dropping some of these in the chat. Maybe drop some of your bad ones. <laughs> I'd love to see some of the big words. And then maybe drop some of your good ones or your better ones. Better edited. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing real quick. So where did where did you get stuck? What are some words that tripped you up? We guess this we bring curiosity to life through the power of play. Oh, love it. We assist adults with disabilities to find and pursue their passions. Yeah, tell me some of the words that tripped you up. What where did you get stuck? I, I can answer this. I guess, um, I mean, our mission is to support adults with disabilities, and sometimes that can be a hard word for the community to understand because, you know, disability is such a large spectrum that mm -hmm. as someone who works here, I always feel compelled to add lots of large words to describe what, you know, intellectual and developmental, things like that, and that also can get lost um, in people in the community reading something. So sometimes just articulating our message in a, in a concise way can be very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. So of course, you know, qualifying disabilities, um, intellectual, developmental, um, these, these words might be needed in some cases. Um, but what's, uh, you know, you say you support 
um, individuals who have these disabilities kind of kind of dig a little more into what that means. So like in the example, you know, we enhance learning opportunities. What does that what does that actually mean? So we help people reach their goals so they can learn from each other. Um, so maybe dig in a little bit and be more specific about it and give me something to visualize. Um, can I imagine can I imagine what you do? Sometimes that's a, a good prompt. We offer home and herd to elephants retired from zoos and circuses and educate the public on the crisis facing elephants in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would just keep editing that and see how we can get it shortened up. You know, maybe it is two parts. Maybe they don't always live together. Okay. Um, we aim to see our clients heal, grow and restore with what has been lost. Heal, grow and restore. Those are really powerful words. Um, I think we all as humans can connect to those concepts. Um, and then that also gives you kind of a three, three part um, messaging strategy too. You can talk about ways that you help clients heal. You can help, you can talk about how you help them grow and you can talk about how you help them restore. And that just gives you a whole bunch of stuff to write about. We give at-risk students the support they need to meet their goals at school and in their personal lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I might, I might tag on something about how you do that um, in some situations. So we give them the support they need. What is that? What do you do? Who is that? Catherine. What specifically do you do to support them? Maybe Catherine's not there anymore. Um, yeah, so and I so that makes me think of the foundation, the National State Community Foundation, because they do. Like, I would say they do that as well. Like, oh, your your mic's broken. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's always little technology trip ups in these things. Um, so I can't speak specifically to your organization, but like for the foundation, you know, they have a, that helping hands fund, they have a textbook assistance, they have childcare programs. Right now they're doing a campaign around their food pantry. Um, so then you get to dig into like, what are those supports? And that's gonna help you figure out specific messaging. Christian, that's a lot of words. I, I, kind, of, I kind of glazed over on that one. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if, we could break it up a little, guided by the love we created. Connection to resources for the most vulnerable of Nashville through providing mills, clothing, and survival. Then our own, we provide sustainable resources and support. Yeah, so I would just start like, I would probably take that and start marking it up and say, well, what, what do you mean by survival supplies? What do you mean by sustainable resources? That's one of those phrases, sustainable resources. Um, so I would dig into that. I think you've got a lot of good stuff there. Like you could build a whole campaign based on everything written in that paragraph. I would start busting it up and start thinking about each thing separately. We provide an option for independent living. Yeah, this is good. So, um, so remember when you're doing a campaign, um, you want to be really specific and you want to be really focused because you cannot say everything. Um, and, and a one campaign is not the end all of your communications, right? Um, you might segment things and decide for big payback, we're going to talk about this feature, make it really focused. Then we're going to launch another campaign over the summer where we talk about this feature. Then in the fall, we're going to talk about this feature. So we may not be able to say it all, but we can say a part and connect it back to our mission somehow in, in the course of time. I hope that makes sense. I hope that's helpful. Um, this is a great start. I'm loving loving all of the thought that's going into this. I can tell you're all very thoughtful people and you're focusing on this work. I'm gonna start moving forward here um, on, the next, on the next section. Um, well, I wanted you to have a break real quick because we're gonna start writing a little bit more and sometimes we have to stretch our legs and kind of clear our brains a little bit before we do that. Um, I'm gonna share screen again show you all a few more things. So um, 
the next thing I want to talk about this, this, this whole benefits versus features um, concept that I'd had in those bullets earlier. I want us to dig a little bit into this uh, to kind of wrap our heads around what, what we mean by that. So um, donors are always thinking or buyers or whoever your people are that you're talking to, you're always thinking, what's in it for me? Like, what am I going to get out of this? And I know that's hard to think about as a nonprofit because we're mission-based and we care a lot about what we do. But if donors are looking for a place to donate their money or time, um, they want to make sure that they are aligned with that. They want to understand that your mission is close to their mission, right? And they want to know that what you're doing uh, matches up with what they care about too. So um, businesses are really good at this. Um, they, so like if we think about like a car commercial, none of them, well, most of them are not saying like our cars are great. Like here's all the features. Let us tell you about the motors and the tires. And I know nothing about cars, so I don't know what they would say, but nobody's like listing the features and the mechanics of the car. Um, they lean into kind of what it means to own that car. Like what is the benefit? So if we think about Subaru, um, their whole thing is like, it's a safe family car and you can keep this car forever and your children will have a Subaru and it just lasts and it's very safe. So, um, and then like Lincoln on the other end of the spectrum is all about this prestige and luxury, right? So they're evoking the sensibility. So businesses are really good at this. Um, nonprofits can be really good at this as well um, if we kind of start flipping the message and we think more about benefits. So um, I wanna start with this example. I want y'all to brainstorm with me a little bit. Um, tell me some features of just like a standard number two pencil. And you can shout it out or write it in the chat. What are like the physical features of, of this pencil? Not the benefits. We're going to get in that second. Tell me the features of these. They're yellow. Mm -hmm. They're solid. The eraser, that's my favorite. That's my favorite feature of a pencil. Wooden, they're wooden. Mm-hmm. Graphite. Okay. So if we were selling these pencils, we wouldn't say, hey, come buy these pencils. They're yellow and made of wood and they have graphite, right? What, what is the benefit of the pencils being yellow? Why are they yellow? Put your salesman hat on. Easy to see in a drawer, mm -hmm. easy to distinguish. Yeah, that's what I think about. So if I'm if I'm selling these pencils and I say, you know, hey, like these pencils won't get lost on your messy desk. I know you have a messy desk and it's not gonna get lost, right? Um, what about the eraser? What's the benefit of the eraser? That one's a little easier. You're welcome to just shout it out to correct your mistakes. Gives you some flexibility, right? You're not like hooked to whatever you just wrote down on the paper. So, right. And I love like thinking about that it's made of wood. Well, it's, you know, being made of wood is not the, not the selling point. It's that it's really easy to sharpen and they're really cheap to make. So they're very cheap and easy to produce. Um, for those, if you've got commitment issues, this pencil may be for you, right? Um, and someone mentioned uh, the fact that it's made of this graphite and it's a very soft material. So you have control over, over shading. And I like, to I like to think about this one because it, it, this helps us think about audience as well. If we're thinking about who we might sell this pencil to, what if we're selling it to artists, right? We want artists to buy this particular pencil. So one of the benefits that we might bring forward to, this, to an artist audience is that you can get the precise shading that you want in your drawings because it's made of this particular graphite. So they may not immediately see, you know, if you just say, hey, it's made of graphite, they may not immediately make that connection. You make the connection for them, right? By just going out there and saying the benefit instead of the future. So here's a nonprofit example. 
um, for Council on Developmental Disability, which is a mouthful. Um, they do a lot of things, but the sum of, and we help them work through their features and benefits. So a feature of this council is that they are the best practice experts. They attend conferences, they study, they collect information, they host um, events and things to have like best practices. So the benefit to like a legislator, which is one of their audiences, is so that you can make confident decisions to support your con constituents. So we took that message and we were able to make marketing out of that. So your go-to resource for disability issues. So instead of saying, we're the experts, that's about me, right? We are the experts. Instead, we turn it around and say, what, what is the legislator going to get out of this interaction? What is the benefit? And the benefit here is that you have a go-to resource. So you don't, you don't have to know everything there is to know. Let us know it and we will help you think through it. Um, let's see, that's 1034. I don't, I don't want us to actually spend time doing this, but I do want you to make note of this. Um, I encourage you to do this exercise. I've got a whiteboard behind me and I will do this often for organizations. We just list out all of the programs, all of the features of the organization and then start to think about, well, what is the benefit to the community? What is the benefit to the donors? Uh, what is the benefit to our constituents because we do this thing? Um, so I'd encourage you to, if you're kind of stuck on what to say in terms of messaging, this is a great exercise to help you kind of come up with some fresh ideas. Okay. Um, that last bullet point, including the reader in a specific ask, I have, I have an example of this that, that came across my email. Um, I got these two emails um, almost on the same day last year. They're both asking me to take a survey. The one on the left um, says, we want to make you aware of this opportunity to assist the governor um, we've created a brief survey. We want to hear from you. Completion is optional, but appreciated. In the communications network ask, they're asking me to take this survey, help your colleagues learn from you about what's working, what's changing, then we can all share in the collective wisdom. So both of these emails are asking me to take a survey. The one on the left is telling me the features is telling me kind of like what this thing is, um, but it doesn't tell me how I'm going to benefit from taking this survey as a business owner. So what are we going to do with this survey? The one on the right is saying, help your colleagues learn from you. So it, they're telling me I'm the expert. Oh, okay, cool. So I'm going to share my thoughts if you're wanting them. Um, and then they're saying, then we can all share in this collective wisdom. So I understand that if I participate in this survey, then I'm part of this like greater collective wisdom. So there's a benefit to me as the, as the reader to participate in that, right, in that survey on the right. There is no benefit listed in the, in the example on the left. So if you want participation from whoever you want participation from, um, asking, telling them what's in it for them is, is going to be a good strategy. So we looked at this earlier, but including the reader and the ask, um, this is always a great strategy, telling me exactly what my money is gonna do. If you can tell me $12 sponsors one child for the entire year, then I can imagine that one child being helped and I can connect with that. Okay. So for the last portion of this workshop, I have two more things to share, um, uh, writing some content and then scheduling it out. So one of the things about this workshop I meant to say earlier is um, you can find all kinds of advice online about how to, how to do a social media campaign in terms of like what programs to use, um, how to schedule it out, different different software there is to help you with this, all the different tools, but that's all about execution. Um, and so this workshop was all focused on kind of the strategy, like what exactly are you gonna say? Um, but I do have, um, I'm gonna flip to it and then flip back for us to do this. I was gonna end on this, but I wanna end on the, on the writing piece. So um, 
I'm actually going to drop this link in the chat for you. Um, so this is how um, I usually go about planning a social media campaign. I um, have this Google Doc spreadsheet, Google Sheet, Google Sheet, um, where I kind of map out, well, how long do I want this campaign to run? And I put in the actual dates that I want it to run. So for the big payback, um, we want to start at least a couple weeks out, uh, if not earlier, if not earlier, kind of letting folks know that we're doing this, like watch out, mark your calendar, right? And then we want to pinpoint throughout the next couple of weeks, when are we going to post? What are we going to say? So if we're posting on Instagram, Facebook, and email, these are the three, these are the three um, um, medias that, um, this is for you, Leah. Yeah, no, y'all tell you saved this. So actually, if you go, if you open this, you go file, um, make a copy, then you'll have it. It should be, should be set up for that. Somebody try that and let me know if it doesn't work and I'll change the settings. But yeah, this is for you. Um, this is a template that you're welcome to follow. Um, so you're kind of deciding, well, what do I want to do? And this is my recommendation. Um, you need to tweak this for your organization. Um, if you are almost never on Instagram, your people are not on Instagram, you have 12 followers over there, um, I probably wouldn't do Instagram for the, for the big payback campaign because they're not there. They're not going to see it. But if you are on Twitter, sub that out. Put Twitter there instead. If Facebook's where it's at, put more, put more time into Facebook, right? Do some Facebook Live, things like that. Um, but this is kind of helping you figure out the structure of like, when should we post things? What are we going to post? So I would do a bunch of stories that are building out your brand, kind of expanding on that key message that you've decided on. Um, let people know it's coming. Make sure people understand what it is. I, I think most of our community is pretty aware, but um, but there's just a lot going on all the time. So there's never it's never hurts to remind people what is the big payback. Um, kick off, do some reminders when it's happening, and then really important follow up afterwards and thank people for participating. Tell them what happened. Tell them the outcomes of their donations, right? Um, so I would definitely plan to do that. So yes, y'all hang on to that. Um, so what exactly are you going to be writing for all of this? That's what I want to leave you with the last 20 minutes of this workshop is um, writing, writing some content. So I'm going to flip back to my fun doggy example. So I know that my goal for this campaign is specifically to upgrade the equipment and raise $5,000. Um, the key takeaway I want people to know when they read my post is that active dogs are happy dogs and we really need to do this equipment upgrade. So I went through and I wrote out some specific messaging. I'm going to drop this in the chat as well for you to have. Um, I like to be really cheesy when I write for pretend things because it's fun. And so I said, bark your calendar for May 5th. Um, plan to donate during the big payback. Our dogs deserve better. And with your help, we can upgrade the equipment for the out for the benefit, right? So that we have a more enjoyable, relaxing summer camp for this year's pack of doggy friends. So the donor can see themselves in this ask. We know when we want the donation to happen. Um, we've got our key message in there um, and there. And what else are we? And we're marking our calendar. So, um, and then I just started writing out a whole bunch of other captions, the content that I could be using throughout the campaign. And I'm making sure every time I write these, that I'm referring to that checklist, that I'm including the donor in the ask, that I have something really specific to say, and that I am somehow saying one of my core messages. Even if I'm not using exactly those words, that should be the takeaway. Keep our dogs running on course with the donation. Can help us, $25 will help us install a new water station to keep our dogs cool and hydrated as they have fun. So just reminding folks of what the benefit is. So I want you to take that and 
Um, a couple other things that are useful for you as you're writing content. Um, make sure that you book, bookmark um, bigpayback.org slash toolkits. So Catherine and Emily and Kelly at Community Foundation are working really hard to put together all kinds of tools for y'all as you're planning out your campaigns. And um, some of the things that are already up, and so that's where the this training will be under training videos. But some of the things that are already up here, um, there is a social media um, reference guide with some suggested posts. So this might be a place. So what I would do is I'd probably copy one of these and I would make it specific to my organization. I would take this language and, and then make it specific. There's also one that has website content as well. But it's all kind of the same thing, reminding what the big, big payback's all about, when to do it, et cetera, et cetera. So I would, um, I would bookmark that website and just make sure that um, you utilize these resources because they are very good, they're very well organized and there's a lot there. Okay, so in the last few minutes we have together, I want you to spend a little time here writing out what could a caption be for one of your social media posts. Um, if you're not sure where to start, Let's let's write the mark your calendar post. So this is kind of like just the baseline, like mark your calendar, it's coming. Here's what we're doing this year, upgrading equipment. So I'm gonna stop talking and let you kind of work for a few minutes and then I'll, then I'll chime back in and, um, and I'd love to hear what you guys are working on. So about five minutes or so to kind of write out one of these examples.
Okay. We have just a few minutes here before we, we wrap things up today. Um, how's this going? How's this writing exercise going? Give me a thumbs up or let me know in the chat if you uh, have some ideas going, have some, uh, have some good starts. Good, Pat. Christian, Lee, good, good, good. So one of the things that I want you to think about is um, that this is a campaign and it's gonna last for a period of time. So each caption in itself doesn't have to do all the lifting, right? We're gonna have we're gonna have a whole bunch of um, content that's gonna support this campaign. So this is this is a start. I have three, four, five, five. I only have five there. I think for this full campaign, you're gonna end up having at least ten. I think to to work through to sort from because you're gonna be posting in different areas. You might be sending emails. Uh, you might be talking to donors. Um, so you want to have an assortment because you definitely don't want to say the same exact say, same thing every time. It's like I was I was breaking someone's sentence down there, Christians. That's who it was. Um, there's a lot in there. So maybe one of your posts is is just about clothing. One is about meals. One is about sustainable resource. Um, but everything connects back to like supporting that journey from homelessness to homefulness. That is a great phrase, by the way. Homefulness, love that word. Um, so taking your key message, breaking it down, like what are the things I can feature and just keep each one of them really simple, you know? Um, and, the, and the writing process is a lot of, um, you write it, you edit it, you write it, you edit it, you write it. And it's kind of, like I said, it's a jumble at first and then you break it down and, and clean it up as you go. Thanks you all for all the hard work and all the kind attention. I know it's, I know the, the Zoom environment is, is um, sometimes a little more difficult to pay attention and I could tell that you were because there was a lot of good thoughts floating around. So thank you so much for being here.